What the hell was that? What? What, what was that? I don't know. We definitely hit something. Whoa! Oh, it went under. Oh god. So one went in, went into the propeller and got destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> got went down onto the table, underneath, and then up. It doesn't sound good. Why is it doing that? This is worrying stuff. So yeah, this is the result of what was printed the other day. We've got these wings, so they'll be like tilting 10 degrees or so, which when the air's coming in, will push them, push it around. And they're for adjusting the vertical position. So whether it's up or down, none of these will be fixed on the actual design. Um, these will retract and come in like this. At the moment, it's fully down and full drag. And then when it retracts and comes fully in, uh, it will be able to fall as fast as it can. That's basically the ballast, the heaviest bit will be at the bottom, so it will fall more stable. We've got like space to put in like nuts and bolts as well, so uh, we can weight it down to adjust the centre of mass. Voila. We've got a one horsepower motor from an aeroplane, like remote control aeroplane that we shipped over from America from David's house. And that basically drives this propeller, produces the lift, the acrylic front is so that we can see in, obviously. This piece here is called a manometer, and basically the flow comes up into the tube on the other side, um, which creates a pressure which moves the fluid that you can't really see, we need to dye it. But the difference in the height between the two levels of water is an indication of pressure, and then from that we can work out the speed of the air inside the tube. This is the controller. We made like a simple program to control it. That's a potentiometer, and that basically allows more or less current from the battery into the, into the motor so that can vary the speed. So we made this this morning actually, colour coded, the danger zone. <laughs> we basically had to think through what shape would slot together and work properly with this new mesh that we laser cut and then last night put it together, glued it and it works surprisingly better than we thought. Basically it straightens the air out so any air that's travelling around will hit it at an angle and then sort of deflect upwards and so it becomes a more uniform flow. We're hoping for it to be stable, because before it's been like flying all around, uh, but with this straightening mesh, it should be okay. Oh, it's turning a bit. That's not nearly as much as we, should, we were expecting. It's so much noisier normally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not with wake up housemates with it. <laughs> No, I think the power in the battery is not going to be enough though. It's charged. Yeah? It is charged. Dave's optimistic as always. Come on. Come on, come on. Oh, that was so close. I'm always right. <laughs> <laughs> We can do that again quite quickly, so that's all right. Happens. Start it and then drop it in. Yeah, we'll put the lip on it. It will definitely work lift with this one. Our actual design is going to have a lip at the top of it, simulating that kind of that kind of lift, and that will um, basically create loads of drag at the top, so it will sit stably and it also help it um, fall stably if it's, t if it's sort of tumbling out of the plane when you let go of it. It'll uh, fall stable quicker. Um, the reason why we didn't have it on this before is because we couldn't wrap a prototype like a cap on it. We wouldn't be able to put any weights in it. Um, and seeing as how we're having like battery problems, this should take off now. Yes, actually, it's ready to film. Come on. It could be the f because it's the first time we've tried the mesh. It could and it's be because there is a camera present. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the mesh could be creating more drag. Things. You want to just drop it from here so we can get a video of it. At least. That's a good idea. You drop it. So if it crashes, at least I'll have a crash. <laughs>
<laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh no. You guys are total pros. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just turned off the power and it kept going for a little bit, so I think there's something wrong with the microprocessor. <laughs> the rest of the project will be more well, impressive. Um, so it's been an eventful afternoon. Um, we haven't really proven anything. I don't know, what is the next step? Well, we're going to get a new battery, I think. It's a shame we couldn't have it like slow motion, like hovering just. Ugh. It would have looked awesome because you could see when it took I off. I know. Ugh. It's usually really loud, like you can't hear at all. We were up till one last night, like playing around with stuff. So, no, our flatmates have only just gone to sleep, so it wasn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this video shows the airflow before and after we changed the mesh. So, this bit here, that was our original design. And as you can see when the balls start moving around, basically the fan creates like a vortex. The ball starts spinning around, and this is basically what's happening to our model when we had it in there. It was bashing against the walls and wasn't giving us like very stable footage. And then we put in the new one. So yeah, you'll notice that they still bobble around because they smack into each other, but they're not spinning anymore. And there's that one there floats for like ages. <laughs> um, <laughs> as you just as I find in the video, yeah. So it clearly makes a difference. Except yeah, we couldn't see that today. Stay in here. Cool. Yeah. Please do not touch anything. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's called the, the Rapid Prototyping Workshop. I guess it's because all these things that you can make here are used for prototypes and models, usually not used in final designs.